Right, Unity devs, it's yet another delving into the Unity UI extensions library. Uh, following the 1.1 update, we might as well go over some of the enhancements to both the line render and the primitive controls, just to sort of badge those all together. We'll try and make this quick and sharp. So, obviously, you can see 1.1, big update. Uh, go watch the update video for that. I'm not going to go back. And so, what we're looking at here is line render, and obviously, this has had one of the most significant updates to this, um, apart from the scroll snap, but hey ho. Um, just to mainly rewrite how the lines are drawn, adding a load of new features, all by request or submitted by other contributors and things, uh, including the busier spot, which was mine, all mine. So if you like curves, you've got me to thank for that one. So um, showed in the update a little sample. Um, seen that set up for demonstrating this where simply we have once it starts it's thinking that's the problem we're recording and trying to do there we go right so you can look at this now side by side so the moment you can see we've got no points in our line in our ui line renderer Let's get rid of that because that's just annoying uh so we're going to add zero you can see it's added programmatically and let's go to 100, a line. And obviously you've got the relative size option here. So you see that goes way too big. So if I want to, I can go back and change this point. And if I go back to relative size, let's see. Can't really zoom out. Uh, okay, let's take this down to maybe, oh, there we go, see. Difference is, the, the simple difference in the rel between the relative sizes is, is that it's whether you're showing absolute UI size or size relative to the UI container. So it's like you know, zero to one and beyond. So you can do either which way. Let's go back to relative because that's nice and easy. So we got one line in and go another point in there and then bring it back on the X to just close that loop off. So in fact, we can go one better there. So we take that up to 200. And then we're going to look to 100 there. Nice little S shape, just running through. So as you can see here, we've got five elements in the line now. And we can turn on this new line list feature, which simply means for each pair of lines, so 0 to 1, 2 to 3, 4 to 5, you can draw separate lines in different ways and join them up however you, however you want, um, which is a nice little addition. we got the line caps there. so. What that will do, it will add on um, a little cap on the end of the lines. And obviously, as we showed as well, you've got bevel and mitre corners. So it just means, is it more rounded, is it more fixed? And again, obviously, the other thing we showed is the Bezier curves. Now, the Bezier curves act in up realms of four. So if I, let's see, um, let's see that, another point of 200, you can see now, they work in pairs of four, because that's just how busy curves work. And you can change how they work. Um, you can also change the precision that they go into. Uh, so you can make either, oops, less or more. So we, and you can have some really good feel, fun with this. So if I like, take that down, so let's grab some more, whoops. Add another, ah, can't type. 300. And let's say down, down to zero, and then I don't know, have some real fun being the curvy areas. So you can see we're building up a nice Bezier pattern here in patches of form. That's just the way the script works. If you want it to work better or more, by all means, submit, submit uh, an extra contribution to improve this. Now, this is fairly basic Bezier support, um, and what you're doing what you can with it, okay. So the way this is working is, if I look at this, is the script. So this button, all it does is takes these two values and manipulates that. Now, quite, there was a, quite a lot of requests for being able to access the line renter programmatically. So I made sure the fact that in this update, that's what it does. And you can control almost any of those options, how you want them to work. So we jump into the script and I'm using the awesome Visual Studio code. If you've not used it already, uh, code.visualstudio.com 
It's an extremely lightweight, fast editor, which if you're not recording, it turns up instantly. <laughs> It's got full code highlight support, uh, it's got integration with Unity, plugins for Unity, the works. Okay, so here we can see the fact that I've got a, a reference to my line renderer. And then all I'm doing is taking the text from the two text values that I've asked for. Now, the way that this works is that the point list is an array. Okay, it has to be an array because that's how Unity works with a lot of the UI rendering. It has to work with arrays. So I've only I've got a nice a list here, which I then just create a list from those points and then add it to it. So I'm keeping a, a list of what's there, and then I'm setting the I'm setting the line renderer points property the array to the list of what's there. Now generally. The reason we do this is because of two things. So a list is dynamic. I can add and remove things to it. An array is fixed. So the items that are on the line render are fixed. So if you're doing it pragmatically changing points, then you need to look at having a list internally wherever you're managing it. And then on the on update or when you need to change it, setting the line renderers points with an array. And you can see here, all I'm doing is using the two array method of a list to get those points out. Simple as. <sighs> nice and easy. So you can see that's all there. Uh, lots of other options and things you can play around with. And as to the other primitive controls, um, a few have had some minor updates. We've changed the way the primitive work controls work so that they all now inherit from to stop that, go to the scene and lose everything. So if I add, let's see, the UI circle. Um, the major change to this is in the code. And if I just, let's just throw, let's just throw some of these up first. So UI extensions, primitives, say the diamond graph, because these are all, these are all fun. So yeah, you know, the circle basically is not yeah you know, how it fills. There is actually and then you can do the segments. Um, you can also hear it. There's two ways this will fill. So you got a percentage where it's like nice and smooth, or we can do it by segments themselves. And the way this would oh, notice this more. So let's see there. So you can see the fill is going up and down. What do I do by segments? So I can. You can see what's happening there. So it's going either by absolute or it's going by fixed elements, however many they are. So if I say put like five in here. So if I'm doing it by segments, I'm going up and down by segments. But if I do it by not, then I'm simply collapsing and enhancing the circle. OK, so a few enhancements there. Uh, obviously, again, we got the diamond graph, which allows you to change around what's in there, but it's a very fixed diamond shape. We've got the primitives, the cut corners, so we can have a cut corner. <laughs> oh, I, li I like this control. It it's quite funny. And you can do columns and things. Uh, have the color bars work and just play with it. And then the last one, the primitives, the polygon, which is the newer control. And here we say, say, how many sides are on it? Where are we? Go, on, Mr. Polygon, where are you? Ah, your system freaking out. Ah, there we go. See, even on, de even on demos, they go, they go well, and I leave it all in. So you can see how many sides that you have in the polygon, but also like the diamond graph as well, you can also change how each of those work, but it's a bit more dynamic because we can do more with it. So you've got quick and simple, or you've got more advanced, and you can play with it how you wish. And like everything else, all of these have the support fill and um, setting the thickness of what the, how thick the lines are and such. Now, the key thing behind all of these, if I look at the scripts, is with the primitive controls now, they all inherit from 
if I can see it. Uh, this, the UI primitive base. And what this means is that all of the controls now implement by default the I canvas ray filter so you can control or even override um, what a ray cast hit is on this object. So if it, if it hits within the segment, it's a hit. If it hits just outside, but still within the rect, then it's not. Very powerful. I could suggest reading up on look, looking the ray, ray cast filters. The I layout element, so it'll control better in layouts and how they lay out work. And obviously they all use the mask or graphics, so you can do masks over the items that are there. And you can see all the implementation code in here, how it all works. And this is now used by every single one of the actual controls themselves. You can see there's some commenting code on it because we used a lot of the Unity on base code to build this primitive base. So if I if I actually look at one of the other classes now, so if I let's say look at the, uh, the polygon class, yeah, you know, these are very very minimal now, and even smaller than that. If I look at the UI circle. You see, there's there's next to nothing in here now. There is simply the draw, simply the the, the unpopulate mesh call to actually draw it, and nothing else. So we've abstracted it all, made it a lot more performant, a lot better to work with. But you can always take these as a start and enhance them uh, to basically go beyond. So that's primitive controls. Um, huge lot of updates in this area, a lot by request. So have fun, enjoy. And if you like the project, please support us. Okay, and thank you and see you till next time.